Okay, how many of you here are aware of what species of shark this is? I see, I hear some people saying it and I see some hands, thank you. Yes, that is a whale shark and I wanted to start my story with the whale shark because um, I had an experience with the whale shark back in 2011 when my brother one day just came up to me and like, Kathy, you want to see whale sharks with me? And I looked at him like, how? How are we going to see whale sharks? And then he said, well, we can go to Exmouth in Western Australia. And, and that's how I ended up going with him to Western Australia. And I remember distinctly when the moment uh, we were on the boat out in the Indian Ocean. And I remember there were spotters out um, on, on planes that would start to signal down to the boat that we were on that would tell us that, hey, there's a whale shark. So I remember the, the point where they shouted, whale shark. All we had to do was just to jump into the ocean. And the point when I jumped into the ocean and I saw the whale shark, I just started crying. It was just such an emotional moment for me when I saw the whale shark and how beautiful it was that I couldn't contain my sorry, that I couldn't contain myself. Like I had my snorkel gear on and I was still crying. So that moment was very impactful for me, but it also made me rethink sharks. Like you know how we always think of sharks as jaws, scary creatures. But actually, whale sharks are not scary, and in fact, they're like the biggest creatures in the ocean, but they eat the smallest things such as the plankton in the ocean. So, at that point in time where I got to swim with a whale shark, um, I was still a school teacher, and I, was, I had been talking to my students a lot about marine conservation, environmental issues, um, animal welfare, conservation, basically the things that were close to my heart. But I realized that the more I talked about these issues, the more I felt like a hypocrite because I was talking about them, but I wasn't doing anything about it. So at some point in 2012, at some point in 2012, I decided that, okay, I'm going to step out of the teaching profession and I want to try to do something about it. And I figured, you know, a lot of times we talk about um, shark fin soup and the demand, but um, when do we ever stop to talk about the supply side? And that was when I decided that, okay, I'm going to step out of the teaching profession and try to see if I can do something on the supply side. And that's when I started the dorsal effect. So with the dorsal effect, I found myself in Tanjung Dua, which is in Lombok, Indonesia. And many sharks are being landed every single day at this um, shark market in Tanjung Dua in Lombok. Uh, yeah, so this is a typical scene that you see in Tanjung Dua. Yeah. So I went to the fishermen who were hunting for the sharks and I told them, hey, if I could pay you more money to take, uh, take people out snorkeling on a boat trip instead of landing sharks, will you do it? They looked at me and said, yeah, sure, why not? How much are you paying me? So I said, I'll pay you three times of what you are making. And yeah, basically just show me the nice snorkel sites that you have. And that's where I found myself out snorkeling. And that's how I started my new job, running the dorsal effect. So instead of being a school teacher, I found myself um, in the ocean quite a bit. And that was really fun. Over time, I started bringing students on school trips. And then um, I wanted the students to start to realize that, hey, actually, when you talk about the shark fishing trade, there's a very human side to it. We always talk about the demand, but what about the supply side? How about trying to get to know the fishermen who have been landing sharks? Try to talk to them and try to see that they're not, they're not, the, they're not the villains, they're not the bad people. They just are making a living out of all this. So why don't you try to talk to them and get to know them better? So with the school trips that are organized with the Dawson Effect, I also try to get the students to sit down and have interviews with the fishermen. I guess over time, um, Okay, before the video is played, maybe I'll just, uh, yeah. So I guess over time, I also found out that, I mean, I, in this journey itself, I learned many things. And I realized that just um, talking about the supply side and the demand side was not, the, was not it all. So yeah, uh, as the video is playing, I'll talk a little bit more. So this is basically something that I experienced um, during my time in Florida last year. It might look like they're doing something really bad to the shark. It's a hammerhead shark, but no, it's actually some shark scientists who were tagging sharks. So basically, they would bring the shark up on the boat, they would quickly tag it, and then they would try to take samples um, of the shark itself to do, so that, so that they could um, get data, science data, in order to impact policies in, in the US. 
So I was really impressed with the work that these shark scientists were doing and I figured that, hey, over time I also realised that it isn't just about the demand and supply. There are so many more stakeholders in this whole shark fishing trade. And I myself, after I came back from Florida with that experience, after having talked to and shadowing so many shark scientists, I started doing some data collection work on my own. And yeah, so this is a picture of me and a good friend of mine, she's a marine scientist, her name is Naomi. What we do is we go to the fishing ports in Singapore and we try to keep and track data of the sharks, rays and wedge fishes that we see in Singapore. Because I realized that, hey, actually data is very important for policy management. You can't just talk about, oh, no eat shark in soup, or you can't just say, oh, this fisherman should stop killing the sharks. It's a lot more complicated than that. So this is, um, this is a map um, that shows all the shark fisheries in the world, and this is based on a, on a paper. Sorry, this is based on a paper that was written by one of my friends who's also a shark scientist. And uh, after reading this paper and looking at the map of where all the fisheries are, I also realized that you know it's not all. We always talk about how sharks are in dire state, which is true. But at the same time, there are also certain species of sharks that are biologically sustainable. So through this paper, I realized that there are nine species of sharks. Oh, sorry, there are nine percent of shark fisheries whereby sharks are biologically sustainable, and that was very interesting for me to learn as well. I guess uh, when we talk about sharks, we always talk about shark fin soup, but we ignore other things that are related to sharks as well. Rays and wedge fishes are two very close relatives of the sharks, and wedge fishes is something that we see a lot at the fishing ports in Singapore. Unfortunately, they are also in danger, and, but not enough focus is talked, like not enough people talk about them, and there isn't a lot of focus on them either. Okay, any of you know what, what popular um, local dish this is? Okay, I hear, I hear it. You said you don't have to show your hands, but yeah, I hear it a lot. So this is fish meat law meat. Why am I showing you this picture? Because over time, I also learned that, you know, we always um, eat things and we presume it's something. So, for example, we might eat fish meat law meat. We just presume that it's fish. But how many of you know that fish meat law meat actually uses shark meat? Okay, some of you do already. <laughs> Great. Okay, so yeah, so that's the thing. I realized that a lot of times we eat seafood and we just classify seafood as one basis, one whole seafood. We don't talk about, uh, for example, we don't talk about shark as shark meat law meat, but we do talk about shark fin soup. Like it's okay, so is it okay to eat uh, shark meat law meat, but it's not okay to eat shark fin soup? But they're both from the same kind of animal anyway. So I figured that um, in Singapore, we don't ask enough questions about the food that we eat. Even um, dishes like fish and chips also contain shark meat, but how come nobody is talking about it? Why are we complaining, campaigning against shark fin soup, but not against shark meat? Yeah, so as I was saying, sorry, I forgot I had a picture of this. Yeah, so I was saying um, fish, fish and chips as well is also, also a very popular dish where sharks are used. Okay, so I think the bigger problem that we're not talking about when I talk, talk about rethinking shark conservation, and it's also something that I've learned throughout my journey as well, is that uh, we get too focused on one aspect of uh, conservation a lot of times. Sure, we can talk about saying no to shark fin soup, but even though, the, I mean the thing is that campaigns have worked and 82% of people have stopped eating shark fin soup. But what's the bigger problem that we're not talking about? Uh, shark meat has been growing in trade for the past few years, but nobody's talking about it. We just keep on focusing on shark fin soup. So I think um, for me, I just wanted to share about my journey so far in trying to be a part of shark conservation. I'm not marine science trained, but I think in terms of uh, conservation, sure, you can start with a passion. You get emotional about it, you feel a lot for it. That's a very good starting point. But along the way of the journey as well, don't stop learning. And don't forget that there are a lot of complexities that come with a lot of issues. I think conservation is important, but I think what's more important than conservation is that we have data-driven, data data science-driven conservation and policies that will make a lot more sense to work, to work towards sustainability at the end of the day. So my takeaway for you is, please sure to ask more questions about what you're eating. Where does it come from? What fish is it? Uh, where was it caught? Is it sustainable? Even if the waiter or the restaurant owner cannot give you the answers, they might cry trying to give you the answers, but still ask the questions anyway. Thank you.